awesome. Check that out. Perfect. Awesome. It's working totally cool. I'm calling this one the family size cooker. It's generally centered around 10 inch pans. You can use anything from the standard 8 inch to up to about a 12 inch pan. Fifty two degrees Fahrenheit out right now. Perfect boil. Not too weak, not too strong. Here's the store-bought original and the DIY replica and the large replica. Here's a shot of the original one, not sold since 2011. It's arguably the best way to solar cook and you can't buy them anymore, anywhere. It's crazy, so I had to bring them back in DIY. Here's the power and weight. 657 watts theoretical versus 810. In practical usage, it's about 600 versus about 750. For people, it's 1 to 2, maybe 3, and the larger model, 1 to 4, maybe 5. Pin size is 5 to 10 inch on the 36 inch model, and 40 to 42 would be 8 to 12, maybe 14. Here's the pro and standard version side by side. and the standard versus large model. These things are really super easy to make. This one's going to be a full 40 inches wide. Gives you an extra roughly 155 to 160 watts. By the way, the stand's adjustable. So you can set it at a much lower height if you want to. Just lower the legs of the tripod accordingly. Here's a quick demo of the 36 inch model, just so you can see what that can do. All the cooking I did with the original model, the 36 inch model, I did in mid to late October. Both of these collectors, by the way, cook in the medium to medium high range. This thing came out fantastic. It could not be better. Everything's cooking great. To see the full vid on this 36 inch model, just go to my channel. It's the video I posted right before this. I'll also post a link in the description section below. The 10 inch versus the 8 inch. Here's a few tips on using it. 
wear sunglasses, stand to the side of it, don't remove the lid when the pan is on the burner, and only use a microfiber cloth to clean it. And you should be set. Awesome. That's literally just grease burn off off the pan, the cast iron pan right now. That almost looks too hot, but it's not. That just is a good, strong, medium high heat. Of course, to get that kind of heat, you just preheat that skillet up there with nothing in it for about three to five minutes. Here's a quick shot now to show you what I mean by adjusting it throughout the day as you're cooking. Let's say you've got the collector on there, it's facing the sun right now, and then 10 minutes goes by. All you have to do, grab the handle, move it about like that. That's literally your 10 minute adjustment and you don't have to do anything else. Then every once in a while, grab the handle and dip it back maybe just a little bit like that or a little bit forward like that. And that's it. That's your whole adjustment. You don't adjust the legs on a day to day basis or even week to week. Maybe a couple times a year you might change those depending on exactly how high the sun is in the sky. But I generally just leave them the same height all year long. And the only adjustments you have to do while you're cooking is up and down a little bit like that and side to side. And that's it. That's how easy it is. Absolutely brilliant idea those people had when they designed that solar sizzler to work with a tripod. It's totally cool. Finally, the list and the builds for both the large model and the stand. All right, the first step is the backing. If you got the perfect size piece, you're all set. If not, just combine two smaller pieces like I did. And then using a homemade compass like this, draw the circle. 20 inch radius, 40 inch diameter. Then drill the hole in the center and add a three quarter inch long piece of half inch PVC. That's half inch internal diameter is what I used. Then I just glued that in, cut the corners, and went onto the fins. It should look like this when you start. You got the piece of twine there, there, the focal point, the vertex, and the upper part of the fin. Perfect. Then 31 more and you're set.
All right, the next thing we're gonna do is lay the fins. So first thing you wanna do is grab your 3 8 inch square wood dowels and cut them down into two inch sections. Then put a bead on the underside of the fin, glue it down, and brace it with two, two of the two inch sections, one on either side. Remember, by the way, to cut the tip of each fin off as you're going around so it fits inside the circle. We have to compensate for the fact that there's now a little piece of pipe in the center. Okay, from there, just add the square brace on the back and the circular piece on the front and drop the bolt through the plastic mounting plate of your tripod like that. Drop it in and then connect the nut, or in my case, the toggle wing on the other side and tighten it up. Then cut down and install the rectangular pieces along with the bottom brace and the two little round handles at the top. Now's the time, by the way, to do any painting if you want to do painting on the outside of this. Three beads of glue and smooth it out. Perfect. By the way, glue it with the shiny side facing up. All right, here's how we do the second round. Bead of glue here and here on the underside of the poster board, and then a bead of glue along the cardboard. By the way, you get five triangles per poster board. They're eight and a half inches wide at the bottom. Best way to do this by far, make three pattern pieces, one triangle, seven inch on the bottom, one and three eighths on the top, about 12 inches total. Lay two of them out on the back of the 12 by 12 inch mirror sticker, stencil them and cut them out. You need 14, that'll take seven mirror stickers. Then for the outer ring, I did 3 by 12s and 6 by 12s, 12 of each. And you just basically do it like this. You put it like that, you line it up with the edge like that. You'll have a strip about this big in between the two. And then use this like this and just kind of angle them all the way around. So 16 total mirror stickers if you don't make any mistakes. I recommend buying an extra 4-pack or maybe two 10-packs so you'll have 20 total in case you make a mistake. I actually made two mistakes and had to use 18 of those total. So Here's a quick shot exactly how I cut out the fins. I just used one of those utility knives and the first couple of passes along the line when you're making the groove with the knife just go really slow. And then after that you can go faster and you may have to pass by 10 times or more. And it'll go right through the cardboard and you'll have a nice clean cut. Okay, perfect. And there it is. Alright, let me give you a quick rundown of the stand so you know how to build it. Starting with the burner grate, that just fits in there. This is grooved and it's got the little edge pieces right there. I think the ring itself is six and a half, but then from end to end it's like eight and seven, eight inches. So it fits right in perfectly to these burner grates. You just set it right in the groove all the way around. Plenty of room, plenty of play, gravity holds it in there and it won't move. It's never fallen out and I'm pretty rough with it. It just sort of sits in there. So that works out good. This is 89055, four bolt flower pot ring, Panacea flower pot ring. And uh, I can't remember the model number on this one, it's really long, but I'll put it in the description section and in the video itself. So you just bolt this onto this little two by three block of wood, four inches long, and then you just use a tube strap, three quarter inch tube strap around there with these big fat screws that go almost all the way in. So tighten those as much as you possibly can, and two of them usually works, but if you want to add another one, there's definitely room. So you got that. Then it's just these concrete form stakes, these steel concrete form stakes with the holes every three inches or so. Pretty popular item. You can get them at Home Depot and Lowe's in all lengths. But go with the two 36-inch ones, and then you can bolt it right here with those bolts we talked about 
overlap it about a foot. I just put it down in the ground six inches. That's all that this stand needs to hold. You know, I can really push on that good and it never moves. It'll shake a little bit like that, but it never falls forward, so it's good. So if you don't have the hard soil, maybe just throw a cinder block or two in front of it. That's one idea. Or a five-gallon bucket full of sand or just something like that, you know, a couple of sandbags, just some so it can't pull forward. Or you could rope it back with like tent rope and some stakes, kind of with the tensioners and pull it back if you do it here, and it won't hit the focal point. If you're afraid about the wood and the focal point, I've never had a problem, honestly, but if you're worried about that, just wrap it in some heavy-duty tin foil. Then the, the light will just uh, reflect off. Shouldn't be a problem at all. And uh, I guess that's about it. I'll put all the details again in the, uh, the deal, and that's cool. Oh, another way you could do it is just quick creep, by the way. You could put some quick creep in the ground or, you know, something like that. You could also, even if you want to make a portable, get a five-gallon bucket, fill that with third or half full of quick creep, and put that in. Then, you, then it's actually portable. You could move it around. To get this in the ground, I just use a hammer, by the way. I just bang on that with a regular standard hammer about 200 times to get it in six inches. That's how hard the soil is out here. So, pretty cool. It works out good. Really neat. Oh, one more thing. Remember, this thing is adjustable, so if this seems too high for you, don't let that stop you, because you can put this thing like a whole foot down about here, and then it's just about the height of your kitchen stove burner. It might be an inch or two higher, but it's right in the range, so it looks about the same, feels about the same, and then you just have to lower the uh, legs to their lowest setting on the tripod, and it still works out. Since it's just a three-foot dish, you can still angle it all the way without the edge hitting the ground or anything. You'll have clearance at two or three inches, even at the lowest level, so it works out really good. We had near 100% humidity, so we got some crazy water vapor shots. This was about 2 a.m. after the rains, by the way. It's just me breathing in close to 100% humidity. Check those out.